I'm Julie Lynn Moray and welcome back to my channel. Today we are at Chateau Alain and Simone, the executive winemaker here, is going to walk us through how to do a proper wine tasting. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Chateau Elan Winery. Today I'm gonna have Lacey and Julie Lynn uh, with me doing a tasting, doing the fun part uh, this time. Simone is gonna make, basically make us look like professionals. Ex exactly, how to look professional when you're not. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to start with uh, a very light wine. So let's say that in the, in the pyramid of wine tasting where you have so many different wines, red, white, young, old, sparkling, sweet, dry, off dry, etc. Uh, there must be a uh, beginning and an end, and there is an evolution. The reason behind this is that uh, your tasting buds have to be, um, you cannot overwhelm your tasting buds because then they will not taste anything. Perhaps if uh, this was like a 7.30 and we just brush our teeth, we would probably not drink <laughs> or appreciate wine so much, right? Because um, your tasting buds are completely numbed. So the same overwhelming experience happens if perhaps we would open this bottle of wine, which is a very bold red blend of Italian variety, aged, etc. And then all of a sudden we pass from here to here. This would taste like water, right? Because your mouth cannot uh, pick the different notes because your tasting buds are overwhelmed. So is it better to go than light to dark? It is always better to, generally speaking, yeah. it's always better to go light to dark when it comes to white to red wine. Okay. And when it comes to white and red, always better to go white, rosé and red. And when it comes to residual sugar, then you want to go probably from dry to sweet. Okay. Okay. We're going to start with a very light but sweet uh, Italian imported wine. This is our Moscato d'Asti, it's made in Italy uh, and is made just for Chateau Elan. The shape of the glass has a reason. Think about a cocktail glass. You would never, you know, you would never pour a wine into a cocktail glass because there is no way you're gonna smell it, right? Oh, okay. It's difficult to uh, mm -hmm. swirl, but most of all, it's all open. So you cannot smell. If you notice the shape, it's a tulip shape of this glass, it means that it holds more wine in the bottle so you can swirl and all the nuances and perfume can concentrate into a smaller exit right it's there so to your nose. Oh, smells so good. So this wine is, I love Ooh. this wine, it's, it's, it smells like a peach and tropical mm -hmm. um, it's a classic it's like Moscato, peachy. yeah, it's a classic Moscato uh, flavor. Um, this is an, an original variety of Italy. Okay, so we swirl it. And then we we swirl it, yeah, yeah, we look, we appreciate the color, we look, and, say, mm, and, and then you're in front of, you know, you're in front of your pourer, <laughs> and you say, oh, nice color, very gold. <laughs> it's a kind of straw yellow. <laughs> And so you said, huh, okay, uh, you, set, you set the tone there, okay, and then okay. you smell it. Okay. So don't stick your nose in the glass. I've seen a lot of people just going deep <laughs> and then do this. No, don't no. do that, because <laughs> the bartender will say, okay, this, we're going to give him the bed, and he doesn't get it. So, okay. lightly. Does it matter if your mouth is open? I know with bourbon. Mm, no, okay. no, it doesn't. So probably okay. you want to keep it closed. Okay. And you gently just uh, sniff it. Okay. Mm. And when you do that, you can actually feel the beginning, the end. There are many, many things that change while you are and sniffing. That's okay. And then there is the important. sip. Oh, okay. The important part. Really quick. Yes. Where am I getting the tropical fruits and the peach flavor from? Because it, yeah. it is a pretty profound like yeah. smell and you kind of taste it. It's really nice. It's very light. It's very crisp. How do you bring that into the wine? Or that's that's actually a good uh, question because some customer, uh, when mostly when you have this fruitiness coming out, the first thought is, oh, okay, there are peaches actually in the making of this mm -hmm. wine. Um, instead, it's a pure grape uh, uh, variety. So it's the grape variety, which is uh, in, it's, it's called an aromatic, specific aromatic grape variety, 
that has this memory of peaches. What are flavor? Flavor are, you know, you call a flavor the way you learned it. Okay, right. so you smell a peach, that's a peach. You smell an apple, that's an apple. So if something goes similar, mm -hmm. then your brain is putting a label to whatever you are smelling. And so all of a sudden it's, oh, it smells like a peach. Okay, but it's the same flavor component. It's just a different, it's just the content is in a, in a different fruit. Um, so it, but it's just grapes. It's just I, I no fruit at all. No, no it's, it's, just, it's grapes. just grapes. Interesting. So, and these are specific varieties. Right, so now it's interesting mm -hmm. that fact because we're going to move into a completely different uh, type of wine. Okay, so rosé, same approach. So number one, you look into that, you see all oh, the color. It's beautiful. It's like a salmon, <laughs> and then you swirl it, and then you approach it. This is a 75% muscadine plus um, Grenache and uh, Chardonnay and Viognier. Okay, so this is a fusion wine. The reason why she thought this would, would have been sweet is because she recognized the muscadine flavor. And her brain said muscadine equals sweet wine. This is going to be sweet. Right. So that's where you can change the all uh, equation if you instead try to remove everything you know just remove it try to you know uh just erase it and then you can get the real feeling of what the wine is because in your brain muscadine wasn't plugged no I and so I you you know you approach the wine more without uh, you, you know i don't exactly have a basis without, like yeah, i don't yeah, have any exactly. basis but i so what like happened it. too is that sometimes your pre-thought on wine uh the, you know uh take you away from experiencing something that uh, uh, you would not experience because if I would have tell you, oh, this is muscadine, your mind is going, muscadine is sweet, cheap, mm, I'm not so right. good. <laughs> but, then, but then you drink, you, you know, and I'm, I'm saying this because from, from Italy, I come here in Georgia, never experienced muscadine, I never knew anything, not even the, uh, um, I would say the reputation of muscadine, mm -hmm. and when I approached it, I loved it. The way you recognize all the top premium Riesling is that they have to smell like a kerosene. So, oh. the, so when you smell kerosene, you know, oh, this is the real deal. Okay. So of know. course, kerosene is not the first thing you say. Oh, I like to drink kerosene wine, mm -hmm. but it is peculiar of the variety. What? So what is this? This is a punch in the mouth. <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> I don't necessarily want to be punched in the mouth. I like a but full. You, but you kind of will because it's still early, and this is a very. Um, when I say Italian style wine, it's not just because I'm Italian and I made it, or because it has a name of the national Italian. What uh, is the name? So we know. The name is Mameli. Mameli. Can we all say that? Mameli. Mameli. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So what? What is it? Why so, did you name it this? I name it this way because Mameli is the name of the author of the National Italian Anthem. Okay. And I use the three varieties, original three varieties from Italy, uh, Nebbiolo, Barbera and Montepulciano. One Obviously, more time? <laughs> Nebbiolo, Barbera and Montepulciano. Try to say that. I, I, uh, we grow this in our vineyards in California, obviously not in Italy. Right. And then we, as our program, as I explained last time, uh, we transport the grapes over here. We make all the wine over here. So, so yes, go ahead. so this is your oh yeah, this is your own wine. Yeah, yeah. you make this wine. Yes, wow. absolutely. That's um, amazing. I feel like I'm so lucky. I to know. Say that. I'm so <laughs> I'm a winemaker. Okay, wow. <laughs> and you can only get this here at Chateau Alon. So yes, perfect. absolutely. So when it comes to red wine, uh, same same approach when it comes to color. Even actually, the color is even something more you want to explore, because. Red wine usually are young, or most of them are aged to from between two and five years of age. Okay, okay. and uh, the color can tell you a lot about red wine. It can be a light mm -hmm. red, and so you expect a lighter profile. But most of all, if it goes into orange nuances, mm -hmm. then it means that it's probably a little too old. Interesting. Red red color become uh, orange color right. with age. 
Um, I was taught a long time ago when I went um, back in college to Napa Valley that when you do the swirl with red wine, I guess you could also do it with white, you look for the legs, the, mm, the yeah. dripping down the side. Yeah. Does that really mean that it's higher in content or alcohol content? It, it, usually, yes. Okay. Uh, it's not actually the alcohol that does the effect, it's the glycerin that does this effect, but it's proportional to the alcohol content. So more alcohol, more glycerin, more tighter the legs. And then you smell it and obviously you go in another different yes, dimension different. where you have spice, mm -hmm. you have uh, earthiness. Um, See, I like that. Yes. I like a lot of flavor. Yes. A there is a lot of, there is fruit, but there is uh, spiciness and there is earthiness. It's all a I think that, yeah, my, That's yeah. what he meant by punch in yes. the mouth. Not yeah. like, <laughs> like, like, my cheeks go in like, mm. I like yes, that. But it's very good. Mm. This is wonderful. What makes me what pucker? My, yeah, pucker. Like, pucker. like what, what, what is that? You need that's... to eat. That's why. <laughs> it's now 10 o'clock in the morning. I had a banana. Okay. This, <laughs> this wine call for food. Okay. So what you, when you uh, drink it, number one, you have uh, a uh, degradation of the protein inside your mouth, and so you feel your mouth being naked. It's yeah, like, it's like, it's like mm. Um, so you know, and so uh, and that's a natural a natural co chemical combination of tannins of the wine and protein that you know is the coating of your mouth. Okay. And so you need food because the food will grease up your mouth again, and so you will feel protected again. And then the wine and the food will go together, and the food cleans up the mouth for the next glass, and, and so the glass cleans up the mouth for the next bite. If you know exactly the experience that you're having, mm -hmm. then you know what to pair with. Would I, would I salad? No, mm -hmm. there's no salad involved over here. Uh, <laughs> but maybe, you know, roasted rosemary potatoes. No, oh, why not? Yeah, yeah okay. that can work. You know, it's oily, it's greased, it's spicy, it's spicy. It's so like flavorful. Boom, we can go with that. It's smooth. So, yeah. I guess, again, uh, the wine tasting approach is all about uh, coming as blind as possible, as free from free thought as possible, so you can really narrow down and really understand if number one, the wine is good or not, and number one, if it's good for you or not for you. I guess you start with knowing if you like it or not, but the more you advance, the more you actually uh, will understand what a good wine is and what a flawed wine is and therefore you build up your own experience and the secret of this is just tasting a lot and i like that Me too. these all three were very amazing i liked how we started with the white sweeter one and then we went to a little bit more crisper i, I thought it was a little bit drier um oh, yeah. and then this definitely was fantastic but i see why i need something in my mouth because I literally went, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the lips went, <laughs> so anyways, perfect. Excellent. Thank you so much for walking us through how to do a proper wine tasting. Yeah. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button, and we'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>